Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to finally talk about CloudKit and how it works together with Core Data and Swift UI. Now, to get the most out of this video, you should watch my video on Core Data that I will have linked in the description as well. In fact, in this tutorial, we will also extend the demo app that we have built in the Core Data video with the additional CloudKit capability. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So, what is CloudKit? CloudKit is Apple's framework to store your app and user data in iCloud. Now, most of you know it as something where um, assume you have a drawing app on multiple devices from an iPad to a MacBook, and you would draw something like a triangle on the iPad. Now, this could be stored locally on that iPad only using core data. However, if you wanted to persist the state across multiple devices that are connected to the same Apple account, you would also use CloudKit to store it in the cloud. And that basically allows to notify the other devices and also update their state. All right, now let's talk about some of the features CloudKit provides us. So we get automatic syncing, as you saw in the previous example but we also get one petabyte of free storage per app. Now that's a lot of memory and it, and it is equivalent to a million gigabytes. And I think for most apps, it is more than enough and it will rarely be the case that you will need more space than this. And in addition, you also get this new CloudKit dashboard, which allows you to um, analyze your database traffic, see what's going on there. And it is quite powerful and I might cover it in a separate video. But uh, for this demo app that we're gonna build at the end, we do not need this dashboard. So let's talk a bit about CloudKit databases. Now there are different types of databases, but in general, all of these have a so-called zone or a CloudKit records zone. And this CloudKit records zone would be equivalent to Core Data's NS persistent store. Now, once again, if you do not know what that is, make sure you watch the Core Data video where I explain it a bit more in detail. And inside of this zone, you will have the so-called CloudKit records, and they are basically equivalent to Core Data's NS managed object. Now, remember in our demo app that we built in the Core Data video, we had to use this Xcode data model D editor where we created an entity task and we gave it some attributes, a date and title. And we also had a look at the uh, automatic file that is generated uh, once we created that entity. And there we also saw that this task entity is basically an NS managed object. So the only thing you need to know is in terms of core data, when we're storing some type, we're talking about NS managed object, but when we're storing it in the cloud, we're talking about CloudKit records. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have different types of databases with a similar structure. So we have a private database, a shared database, and a public database. The private database is basically private to each user and their iCloud account, and only the user themselves will be able to access this database. Now, each user has also a shared database, and this comes handy if one user decides to share data with another user, and the shared database would contain that data as some kind of proxy to the actual owner's data. Now, lastly, there's also the public database, and that is basically a database where anyone can write and read from. Now, if we zoom out a bit, all of these databases are actually part of a so-called environment. And initially, when we start developing, they are part of the development environment. And in this environment, we also define a schema. Remember, we were using this Xcode model D file editor where we were able to define the attributes for a to do. And the schema is basically equivalent to core data's NS managed object model. And lastly, all of this again is part of a container. And when we want to use this iCloud, we have to provide this um, container ID which we will also do in our demo app later on. All right, now let's talk about how we get from core data to CloudKit. Now, assume we have this iPhone, we have some kind of data and it's locally stored using core data and we want to get it to the iCloud. So for this, there's this handy new class called NS Persistent CloudKit Container. And it is basically equivalent to the core data's NS Persistent Container. And in fact, all we really have to do is really rename it to the NS Persistent CloudKit container, as you will see later in the demo. And what it does is it does everything the NS Persistent container can do as well. But in addition, 
you have the so-called local replica in the middle which basically takes care of synchronization tests because it could happen that multiple devices uh, modify something in the iCloud and you have to also kind of define what happens if someone overwrites while someone other overwrites the same file for example and it also takes care of the mapping remember when we store it locally we're talking in terms of NS managed objects but when we want to store it in the iCloud we have to talk about CloudKit record so the NS persistent CloudKit container also takes care of the mapping for us. And it's really impressive with how less code we can already get started using CloudKit. So without any further ado, let's get straight into the demo app. All right, now, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to extend the demo app we were building in the core data video. And what we really want to achieve is something where we can add a new task in here and every device that is connected to the same iCloud account should be able to synchronize to it as well. So um, if I created a task on this iPhone 8 simulator, for example, and I would get this iPhone 11 to refresh. Unfortunately, there's an issue with the simulator. I have to do the following to get it to refresh. However, if you run it on a real device, you should be able to synchronize real time without you having to do this minimizing and getting back to it. Now, if we try to update it and see if it um, refreshes you will see it works just as well once again it doesn't work on the simulator because it works with silent notifications to update these uh, states and you have to run it on a real device to get the real-time updates now there's one more thing you have to make sure for it to work um, you have to also make sure that you go into settings and then up here you have to make sure that you're locked in into an account and iCloud, iCloud must be enabled and the same holds for every other simulator you're using. So for this one, it should also be locked in into an account. Otherwise, it won't work as expected. So let's get to the code. All right, now here I am in Xcode where we stopped in the last video regarding the core data demo app. And I will basically continue here and add the CloudCat capability. And to do that, the first thing we have to do is go into this Xcode project. And I want to make sure that signing is enabled. I want to check automatically manage signing. I will, I will have a team selected and also a valid bundle identifier. Then I can close this and start adding capabilities. Now the first capability I need is iCloud. So I will search for iCloud and I will simply double tap it. Now, once it opens, I have to make sure that I choose CloudKit down here. And I have to also make sure that I choose the container. Now, you can choose one of the existing one if you have one. If not, you have to press this plus icon and give it a name. Now it could happen that it doesn't work in the, at the first time. Try to uncheck it and check it again and try adding it again. And when you press this plus icon, you can give it a name. So I will call this one simply com.beyond.todos.test and then press OK. And then as you can see, the container was selected. Now. As soon as we choose CloudKit and add this container, you will see it also adds push notification. However, this is not enough. We need another capability. And that one is called background modes. And once we select background modes, we have to also make sure that we choose remote notification. And that is because we want to make sure that the devices that are connected to the same iCloud account get silently notified when uh, the data in the iCloud changes so they can update their state as well. So this is basically all we have to do for the project setting. Make sure you save this and then you want to go into your persistence class. All right, now once we're in here, the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure that we uh, use this new NS Persistent CloudKit container. And the way we do that is uh, simply rename it to CloudKit container. And you will immediately notice that this container is not complaining. It is of type NS persistent container and I'm assigning it to the NS persistent CloudKit container, con CloudKit container and uh, Xcode is not complaining. And that is because if you have a look at this class, it is basically also of type NS persistent container, but it gives us some additional functionalities that allow us to work with CloudKit. Now, this is the first thing we have to do. And then we have to also do the following. We have to go to the view context, so the container.view context, and we have to set the automatically merge changes from parent boolean to true. And that basically allows to automatically merge the changes once these uh, silent notifications come in. And we have to also do another rule. So we have to say container.view context, 
and set the merge policy. And the merge policy should be set to the NS merge by um, property object trump merge policy. And that's a policy that merges conflicts between the persistent source version of the object and the current locally stored version of the property. And this is the policy you want to make sure is set. All right, now make sure you save this and um, try to get it to run on two different simulators. It would be actually even better if you could uh, deploy it on two different uh, real devices because then you do not have to do the minimizing. But let me run it on the iPhone 8 first and I will also run it on the iPhone 11. All right, now since I defined a new CloudKit container, they all lost their uh, previous to-dos. And uh, if I would add a task in here and then I would do the trick with the simulator again, it should update and you should see the task in here. So if I would um, update it, you should also see this one update as well. And if I delete it, it should also be deleted. Now, this whole thing with the minimization is only necessary on the simulator. Make sure you uh, run it on a real device so you get the right behavior. And if this doesn't work for you, it is most likely the re case because you haven't uh, signed in with the same account on both devices. You have to make sure that they are both using iCloud, otherwise it won't work. All right, now this is really all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. As you can see, it's very easy and there's not really a lot of code you have to add on top once you have um, core data working for you. Now, I hope this tutorial was helpful. As always, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when new content arrives. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.